Hello, I'm Jim Lazinski, and welcome to another episode of Hardfire. We have a very special episode of Hardfire tonight. We're having a candidates forum with the candidates for New York State Attorney General. Now, chances are these are not the candidates you may have heard heard of. All you've been watching is the uh, mainstream TV news coverage and reading the, the big newspapers. Uh, we're going to introduce you to some candidates, very uh, worthy, fine candidates who are on the ballot, but uh, the big media, for whatever reason, doesn't want you to know about, but we're going to let you know about them tonight. Uh, I should also point out that we did invite the Democratic and Republican candidates for Attorney General, uh, Piro and Cuomo. Uh, they did not return our invitations or our calls or our emails, so they're not here, but we're going to plow on without them. and. Right now, I'm going to introduce the candidates to you very briefly. Uh, first, the Attorney General candidate from the Socialist Workers Party, uh, Mr. Martin Coppell. We also have with us the Attorney General candidate from the Libertarian Party, Chris Garvey. And finally, we have with us tonight the Attorney General candidate from the Green Party, Rachel Treichler. Let's thank all of you for being here tonight. Thank you. And let's get right down to it. I'm going to give each candidate two minutes to introduce themselves, say a little bit about why they're running, and then we're going to have a, a good conversation and get into the media issues. So, Martin, why don't we start with you? Sure, thank you. Uh, well, the Socialist Workers' Party camp campaign is presenting a, a working class alternative to the Democrats, the Republicans, the Greens, Libertarians, and all the other capitalist candidates in the elections. Uh, first of all, we call on working people to oppose the escalating U.S. threats against North Korea. Our campaign says no to all sanctions against North Korea, no to the boarding of North Korean ships and other acts of piracy. We say withdraw all U.S. troops and weapons from the Korean Peninsula, and we support the Korean people's struggle for re reunification. Uh, this is what we've been campaigning with in our campaign newspaper, The Militant, and will continue to do so. Uh, we defend the right of the Korean people to, uh, and uh, the people of Iran and other semi-colonial nations to develop nuclear energy and other energy sources needed for ba the most fundamental economic and social advances that um, are made possible through access to electrical power. And we oppose the efforts by the U.S. government to block this. Uh, the problem that working people face is not uh, the particular president that's in office or a, a, a particular party that is in office. It's a systemic problem, and the problem is capitalism, uh, the system of private property for, and profit for a few. Um, what's needed is for working people to look to ourselves and to organize a movement by millions to take political power out of the hands of the ruling capitalist class and establish a workers and farmers government. Uh, that can join in the worldwide struggle uh, for socialism and liberation. Uh, to defend ourselves against the attacks by the employers, working people need to, uh, we support the struggles of working people to organize unions and to use our unions to protect ourselves against the attacks on our wages and our living standards. Uh, we also join with millions who have been in the streets over the past months uh, for demanding legalization of all immigrants and we call for unionizing all workers uh, uh, regardless of where, where we are born. Thank uh, you. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, th thank you, Martin. And the next candidate who's going to introduce himself in this campaign is Chris Garvey of the Libertarian Party. Hi. Uh, the Libertarians uh, believe that people should be free to do whatever they want except initiate force, the threat of force, or fraud against other people or their property. And so if elected Attorney General of New York, uh, it would be my goal to uh, restrict the government to those activities and, and so far as I was able within uh, the constraints of my office. Um, the Attorney General is elected by the people and so my loyalty would be to the people of New York State rather than to the other two branches of government whose interests may conflict with the interests of the people. Uh, the prevention of theft by government officials or a misappropriation or improper influence would be one of uh, what I would consider my major uh, objective as Attorney General. And toward that end, uh, I would not like to see Mr. Cuomo elected because when he was at Housing and Urban Development, uh, he presided over the disappearance of perhaps $59 billion. Uh, which the uh, sabotaged accounting system was not able to determine where it went. His spokesman said that money is not missing, it's just unaccounted for. 
and uh, that's a great line uh, for me to use uh, because it's uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, the um, that sort of theft using government power to take your tax money and divert it to cronies to friends uh, is is uh, unpardonable. And uh, it's when you consider that the Attorney General of New York's job is to prevent theft and to protect the interests of the people, uh, this is the wrong guy to be in that position. Now, if you are planning to be running that government and, and being a crony of that government, uh, Andrew Cuomo would be the guy for, to protect your interests as you're stealing money from the taxpayer. Great. Thank you, Chris. And finally, uh, we have Rachel Treichler from the Green Party. Rachel, why don't you tell us about your campaign? Thank you for that uh, opportunity to discuss my campaign for Attorney General. I've been a practicing attorney in New York since 1982. For eight years, I was an associate with two large New York City law firms, and I started my own practice in 1989. For the last 12 years, most of my legal work has been pro bono work on behalf of the Green Party and the Sierra Club. I've also done non-legal work in order to pay my bills, in order not to take clients who might object to my work for the Green Party and the Sierra Club. It, as you might assume, it's been difficult to find paying clients who uh, don't object to that work. Um, I am running for Attorney General to promote our civil liberties and protect our rights to a democratic form of government, also to increase those rights. Because I believe that to adjust to the changes that we face ahead, democracy, increased democracy, is the way that we are going to meet those challenges. Okay, great. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, at this segment of the program, I'd like to just open it up to uh, a freewheeling conversation about what the real issues are facing New York State, and particularly as they pertain to Attorney General. I imagine they're not what the, the silly fluff we've been reading in the newspaper about eavesdropping on people's spouses and, and yachts and so forth. There, there are many issues um, facing the state and things that the Attorney General, General can do to address those issues. So I'm going to turn it over to you, the candidates. What are the issues that the, the, the uh, people should be talking about and thinking about as we look to elect a new Attorney General? Whoever wants to jump in. Well, I think perhaps one of the most immediate issues is the fact that uh, we are now in the process of choosing new voting machines. And uh, although the Attorney General is not going to get to decide what new voting machines to use, uh, we have uh, as the possibilities the direct recording entry machines where you touch a screen and hope that some electrons count your vote somewhere in the back of that machine and maybe go over a network and get adjusted in Venezuela if somebody doesn't like the count. Uh, they are unverifiable. They leave no paper trail. They're extremely expensive. They take a machine for every voter, and uh, they are the, they, they're unreliable. They uh, have a very short working life. Uh, they're horrendous. Uh, contrast that to the other possibility, which is uh, paper ballots, optical scanners, which uh, if the machines die, well, you just continue filling out the, the ballots on paper. Everyone in the voting uh, the polling place would be filling these things out in paper. You could have as many booths as you could afford curtains for, uh, which isn't very expensive. And you just go out and you run them through a scanner. The scanner counts the vote, the vote puts the, the ballot into a box, and, uh, and if there's anything wrong with the final tally, you just go back and count the pieces of paper and, and tally up the votes by hand. So this is a far superior system, and if, a, if I were Attorney General, and a Board of Elections selected the direct recording entry machines, I would presume that there's some improper influence and I would investigate accordingly. Rachel, what do you think about this issue? I completely agree with Chris and I believe that it is unconstitutional, uh, it, that it violates our right to vote and to have our votes counted correctly to use electronic voting machines because all the computer experts agree that electronic machines can be manipulated with. So as Attorney General, I would uh, seek to enforce our constitutional right to have our votes counted, and that does not mean using electronic voting machines. 
and even better than optical scan machines are hand counted paper ballots. That's what I think we need to use, which is what they use in Canada and many countries around the world. Okay, Martine, how do you do hand, hand counting ballots, paper ballots? How did the socialist workers come down on this? Well, I think that's a, a secondary issue because our, uh, as a working class campaign, we begin not with New York. None of the fundamental problems we face can be viewed in narrow New York terms, but they had to begin with the world and the interests of working people in the world. The Attorney General in, in the capitalist government is the top cop, and we're uh, opposed to both uh, the war on working people abroad from the U.S. Uh, assaults on the peoples of Iraq and Afghanistan and call for the immediate withdrawal of all those troops. And we're also opposed to the war by the same employer class against working people at home. And under the banner of the so-called fight against terrorism, the Democrats and Republicans and, and uh, the, the wealthy that they represent are, are targeting the rights of working people. We're opposed to the increased uh, militarization at home, uh, the increased spying and harassment that's done under the, under the banner of homeland defense, whose target is working people uh, and the resistance by workers to the attacks on our rights that the employers know is going to increase. Martin, don't you think that increased democracy is the way that workers and everyone will achieve more rights? Um, well, we don't think that you can reform capitalism out of existence. Uh, the, pro the, the problems that you're pointing to are a symptom, um, but as long as you have a system that's based on, on the profit drive, um, that fun the, the most fundamental de the denial of democracy is the fact that working people who produce the wealth in this country uh, are not the ones who make the decisions. They're made by a tiny handful who are the ones who own the factories and the, the means of transportation. Well, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And to solve yeah. that problem, the only way to address it is for working people to organize ourselves independently of all the capitalist parties and to take political power out of their hands. You cannot use the existing government and use it for the benefit of working people. And that's why we look to the example of Cuba as an example of workers and farmers who made a revolution a, fun, a deep going social revolution and took power into their own hands and that's why Cuba shows what working people can do in, in the uh, real freedom where working people are the ones who are the masters of their destiny both in so what they do at home and in the solidarity they uh, bring to working so are you people around the world. violent revolution? Uh, capitalism is, is the most uh, the biggest right, source of violence let, every let, day let's against get our, working let's people. Let's get our terms clear. When Adam Smith wrote Wealth of Nations in 1776, it was not so much an explanation, excl uh, explanation of capitalism as a, a tirade against mercantilism, where uh, large favored uh, entities, in, in this case the British East India Company, were getting massive tax subsidies so that they could impose their uh, their marketing uh, their, their, and their harvesting on the colonies. And Adam Smith said no matter how much the British East India Company makes on their sweetheart deals with the British government in those colonies, it can't make up for what the taxpayer pays to support their privileges. And therefore, it's a bad deal for the country to give privileges to certain major corporations and major companies at the expense of the taxpayer. But uh, be that as it may, we're running for Attorney General of New York State. We really don't have a lot to say about national policy unless you could investigate something like 9-11 and maybe bring down the existing government by showing that somehow there was some foreknowledge or something like that, uh, which might be possible for the Attorney General. If we could get back to that um, separation of capitalism and government and favoring favorite companies, one issue that does resonate here in New York State, and as well as in other states, is eminent domain abuse, and particularly here in Brooklyn where we have this Atlantic Yards project. Um, uh, Rachel, uh, where, where do you and the Greens come down on uh, eminent domain for benefiting the private sector? We are opposed to eminent domain because it's generally used to favor big developers. It, you know, pr in, in practice, you see that it's used to take property from the poor and give it to the rich. Uh, it, it seems to be really used as a form of theft. Mm. So um, we oppose we oppose the use of eminent domain and it's also it's often used uh, uh, with racial impacts that's one of the points that Justice Thomas made in his dissent in the Kello decision was the, the urban renewal 
uh, which, which em this eminent domain grows out of, has often had a racial aspect uh, as well, you know, as part of the economic. Sure. Well, libertarians are opposed to theft uh, in general, and of course eminent domain is a form of theft. Now, we're not only opposed to it, and have been opposed to it since the founding of our party, uh, for public taking for private use. We're also against public taking for public use. If the government wants to take your property to build a road, well, they should pay you whatever you want to, whatever you uh, uh, feel that that property is worth to you, or buy someone else's property is willing to sell it for less. Is there, do any of you think there's a role that the Attorney General could play in, in fighting eminent domain abuse? Yes, because the Attorney General represents the state of New York, and most of these private takings uh, through a government uh, involve some sort of influence. And uh, I would say that uh, per se that influence has to be improper to favor one taxpayer over another. And so when the New York Times steals several, steals a, a city block for the purpose of, uh, of getting a sweetheart deal on their new headquarters, uh, I'd, I'd look into that. Uh, it's pretty easy and I'd understand why politicians would be in favor of that because the New York Times without paying any money to anyone can endorse candidates and no major party candidate wants to go against the New York Times. Sure. But that is one of the natures of, of, of the ability of government to steal from some people and give to others. Martin? Well, our campaigns point to the capacities of working people to look to ourselves, and that's why we begin with the need for unions. It doesn't, no politician uh, can change, uh, address the problems that we face, but it's organizing unions and facing the real problems that none of these capitalist politicians address. The, the drive to extend working hours to make working people work harder, faster, under more dangerous conditions. And that, the fact that uh, construction workers are getting killed over and over again because of the profit drive that they are driven to by employers who are willing to cut corners to, to make uh, those profits. And the only solution is to, for working people to organize and to organize unions and to join in solidarity with working people around the world. In terms of the, the government and, and related to the uh, I think sub the subordinate questions that are uh, just being raised a moment ago. Um, in, uh, in face of the energy crisis, for example, we call for the nationalization of the energy monopolies under uh, workers' control. Uh, we, uh, another major social problem is the health care problem, which as long as health care is a private commodity, uh, working people will be treated like a commodity, and we call for socializing the entire health care system to be run uh, in the interest of working people as a federally uh, guaranteed lifetime medical care for all working people. Well, of course, what you're describing is some of the problems that were created when government interfered with what were the uh, initial rights of people. When people are hurt on the job, they, have, they should have a right to sue their employer. But thanks to the solution of workman's comp, uh, employees don't have a right to sue their employer. They have to settle for whatever workman's comp gives them. And so an employer some of the employer's uh, uh, savings for imposing risk on workers is imposed on the workers through the workman's comp system, which in a sense was a socialist way to solve that problem, uh, rather than allowing the courts to, to take care of it. Um, and so uh, over and over again, you, you find government uh, policies. For example, uh, our health care system is an artifact of our tax system. Uh, the only way you can use post-tax, uh, pre-tax dollars to pay for your health care is if your employer buys your health insurance. Well, who would buy a health insurance program where if you got too sick to work, you lose your insurance? Only your boss would buy such a policy. And so by the income tax forcing you to go to your employer to seek health care insurance, you wind up with a health care insurance that the free market would not uh, would not offer you because you wouldn't accept it. Rachel, what's the uh, green position on health care? Uh, we support universal health care uh, and also an emphasis on health and not just health care, not to just be sort of building the disease management es establishment, but to provide people with opportunities to have good health through organic food, and particularly through reducing the exposure to toxics in our environment. The uh, great increases in cancer that we see are closely tied to the uh, increases in toxics and radiation in our environment. I also wanted to uh, respond to Martine's point about the unions because 
he is not making a distinction uh, with regard to unions that I think is very important is whether unions are run democratically or not because a democratic union really represents the workers but not all unions are democratically run so I think it's very important to to emphasize that unions need to be democratic like other aspects of our society. Uh, Joe Stalin became the uh, secretary of the uh, uh, Communist Party because he realized that it's not who votes that counts, it's who counts the votes. And very often in union elections, that's uh, what decides who is going to be running the union. It's only through workers be, uh, organizing to fight their number one enemy, which is the, employ the employers that are squeezing our living standards, that unions can be transformed into democratic instruments that really represent the ranks and to instruments of struggle primarily. To, and that means uh, reaching out in solidarity to fellow workers. We support the Goodyear strikers, the 15,000 Goodyear workers who are facing uh, vicious assaults on their wages and their uh, attacks on their, uh, the, the uh, benefits of the retirees. And we support uh, the right of the majority of workers to, who do not have a union to organize. Uh, like the coal, mi uh, coal miners that are fighting in Kentucky. Uh, since the beginning of this year, more than 30 miners have been killed uh, in so-called accidents that are simply a result of uh, the cold-blooded decisions of the employers to run these operations at uh, but our, total our, callousness towards Our workers. workers have to compete with the workers in the rest of the world, and our workers uh, face two huge burdens. One is the income tax. Uh, another is the Federal Reserve System, which steals vast amounts of money out of your savings and out of the value of everything you earn. When you go out and buy a house, you have to compete against those housing and urban development loans that are created out of thin air, basically. And you have to work uh, and indenture yourself to a mortgage for many years in order to compete with money that the Federal Reserve creates out of thin air with nobody working for it. So when you talk about uh, burdens on, on the workers, there is no bigger burden than this burden which, which took 96% of the value of our money uh, out, of, uh, out of it since uh, 1911 so when it was first created. Chris, would you say that the Federal Reserve is the heart of capitalism? Or? No, the Federal Reserve is a banking cartel that was okay. created as a government monopoly uh, on, over a Christmas vacation when most of the senators and, and representatives had gone home. Uh, when Woodrow Wilson was blackmailed into signing it because he was found to be sleeping with his secretary and he didn't want his wife to know. Uh, it was the worst thing he ever did. Well, there was World War I. Uh, but uh, uh, he, he regarded it as the worst thing he ever did. Well, I want to say that uh, I think uh, I want to take issue with one thing, which is uh, the employers always try to pit working people in this country against working people abroad to make us think in terms of Americans. But in fact, Working people have nothing in common with the employers. We have nothing in common with the Rockefellers and the DuPonts or the Heinzes and the Kennedys, but we have everything in common with working people in Mexico, France, China, Korea, and everywhere else. For example, we op oppose the patriotic campaign that's being used to justify the war measures that are being taken against North Korea. We're opposed to the, uh, the uh, proposals by the U.S. government, for example, to justify piracy at sea to board North Korean ships, that's, that's against the interests of working people. Uh, we're also opposed to all protectionist tariffs um, uh, that are also meant to divide working people around the world. Okay. And believe it or not, uh, time does fly when you're having fun, and it's almost time for the end of the show, and this has certainly been a, a great conversation. I do want to give each of our candidates that are here with us tonight uh, a one minute to sum up their campaign and, and make a final appeal for your vote. And I guess we'll go in reverse order of the way we did it last time. And so, Rachel, why don't you tell us, give us, give us the final pitch for your campaign? Well, to sum up my position, I think that the best way for us to face the challenges that lie ahead is through greatly increased democracy. Our problems arise because the large business enterprises that dominate our society have used centralized hierarchical decision-making processes that do not allow most of us to have a voice in the decisions that are made. So I hope I can count on your vote on November 7th. Thank you. And now uh, Chris Garvey, the Libertarian candidate for Attorney General. Well, once again, I'd like to say don't vote for Andrew Cuomo, who made $56 billion disappear from housing and urban development in 1999, uh, not missing, just unaccounted for. Uh, vote Libertarian. We'll uh, do what we can to get the government out of your uh, life 
and uh, reduce regulation and allow you to live and let live uh, free of uh, as much interference as I can get the government to, to, uh, to not uh, impose on you. Thank you, Chris. And finally, uh, once again, Martin Coppell of the Socialist Workers' Party. Uh, yes. Well, I want to say that our campaign has been uh, getting a very good response from working people across the city and of New York and across the state uh, as uh, many working people uh, are faced with the assault on our living standards by the employers and know there's something deeply wrong with the system as they also look abroad at the, um, the imperialist wars, the, uh, the systematic racist oppression against blacks, the uh, second class status of women, all these when it comes down to it, it are bred by uh, the, the private profit system of capitalism. And our, our working class campaign is getting a hearing. In our campaign, we urge people to vote for the socialist workers on uh, November 7th and beyond November 7th because we're running a campaign 365 days a year. We have uh, forums every Friday night at our campaign headquarters at 8 o'clock. Uh, I encourage you to check out the militant newspaper and to also get involved in the Young Socialist, which is an organization of young people that are um, getting out the socialist working class message uh, everywhere. Thank you. Okay, and that's pretty much going to do it for Hard Fire tonight. I'd just like to remind you, when you do go to the polls on November 7th, just don't look in column A and column B because that's just you know Coke and Pepsi. You're getting two of the same thing. They're indistinguishable. Check out these minor party candidates. You've heard a lot from them um, tonight. Um, very substantial, deep candidates. And uh, if you uh, like to see this interview again or any of the other hard fires you can go to hardfire.net and also all of, all these episodes are available on Google video and so you can go to Google video and for hard fire and and see this uh, forum again and make up your own mind just don't, don't buy what the mainstream media tells you that are your two choices because you have many more than two choices so dig a little deeper and make an informed uh, vote for Attorney General. I'm Jim Lisinski, and you've been watching Hardfire. Good night.